Okay, this is uh, just a short video to talk about how we import data into R. As you can imagine, we can't do analysis of data until we get it inside of R so that we can do the analysis. So um, this will just take a couple minutes to do and um, there's a handout that you'll want to follow along uh, with as well. So um, here's the handout. Um, it explains that there are two different techniques. Um, one is from base R. It's a command called read.csv and other versions of it. Um, <clears throat> it works great. Um, typically, you have to download the file to your computer before you open it. <coughs> read underscore CSV, read underline CSV, which is part of the tidyverse, which is a set of packages we're going to use. They're a little more modern. And it'll let you actually go to web pages as well as uh, local things. You can actually do that in read.csv as well. So um, let me just get going here. I'm going to just copy these uh, lines over to R. So here is R. And I'm just going to make a new script window. I already opened up a project. So I just made a project called data that I'm going to use for the first half of the semester this uh, term. And uh, here we go. So we want to get rid of all the text uh, so that it doesn't forget. And then we can put a hashtag here so that those are comments and not actual code that's going to run. I'm doing this in a script window, but you could, of course, do it in a uh, uh, R Markdown window as well once you've uh, kind of gotten into the habit of that. It's also a good idea to save uh, pretty early. All right, so anyway, I'm going to use the read R, which is the tidyverse method first. So you come here and you just copy your uh, data file to get there. And uh, what you'll see is that, hey, that doesn't work. That's a uh, web page, not a data file. So we can't actually do that. Oops. So instead, we're going to come over here and we're going to go to that web page here just on my Chrome browser. And you can see here tells the story about uh, the data. If we go into the data folder, you can actually see here is the data. So I'm going to copy that link address and now I'm going to come back and do the same thing in R. So we're going to go to read R and I'm going to put that in. Notice it's abalone.data. Um, more commonly, we see .csv as we do that. Now, data comes in a lot of different formats. Um, in this particular case, it's weird because the first row is not uh, title, so we want to not do uh, first row as name. So we're going to undo uh, that. And you can see now it just calls them x1 to x9, which again is sort of annoying. Um, but that's how it goes. Now, you see down here, it actually puts the code you need. So while you can click the import button and have it do it, what I think is a better technique is to just copy this all, cancel out of here, and then paste this all down here. So you can see first it has the library. Remember, library loads in uh, the package we need. This is readr, which is the particular package inside tidyverse that works. If you already did tidyverse, you can just use that one. Then is the abalone command itself, and then a view command, which I'm going to comment out for now. So we're going to run the tidyverse package, and that's going to import all uh, eight of those packages that we use in Tidyverse. Um, but if you just used uh, read R, that would be fine too. You can see read R is down here. Then here's our read underscore CSV command. Notice it had an option called call names equals false. You remember the top of the columns weren't actually the name of the variables. They were uh, just uh, data. So you have to go and uh, get that. So you can see as soon as we did that, uh, It comes over here. Now we can click over here and see what the data looks like. Um, this is a data set we're going to use later. It's about abalone, which is a kind of snail. Um, and you can see the first column, x1, is a character variable that has m's and f's. It, it's the sex of the abalone, um, which is one of the things we'll talk about. And then the rest of the variables are just numerical variables that have numbers. Notice that x9 are actually whole numbers, integers, and the rest of them are other data. You can also use this view command, capital V, uh, view for abalone. If you do that, what happens is it's going to open it up here in a tab and make it look more like a spreadsheet, an Excel file or whatever. And that's a little bit easier to look at and you can see what your data looks like. For big data sets, big V view is not a good idea because it's kind of slow. This data set is uh, 4,000 with nine, which sounds like a big data set, but it's actually not in the grand scheme of things. Um, as we get later into the class, um, you know, that'd be big in Excel file. So, um, doing it like that actually does make um, a fair bit of sense. Now, if we wanted to do it the other way, you can actually just do read.csv. And 
it actually doesn't use that uh, variable, but here read.csv. Um, notice that it does do the thing with the arrow, so it assigns it to a name. So I'm going to call this abalone2 because I don't want to uh, have uh, save over the data I already downloaded. So I do that and it's going to run. And here you go. Notice that it does have one fewer row because it did do the same thing uh, where it uh, didn't know what to do with that first row. If we actually go into the help screen over here, we can look and see how do we leave those uh, header rows off. And you can see it's just header equals false. So instead of doing call names equals false, it's header equals false. Um, false doesn't always have to be in all caps, but it's actually a good habit to get into because there are some commands where it wants to do that. Now, um, I'm just going to run it again. Notice each time I do this, I'm going to the internet and getting the data again. So um, now I've done that. You can see we got that guy back. And now the variable names are again D1 instead of X. So that's kind of interesting between the two different data sets. And again, we can use that view command again to look at it if we want to. Abalone2. And as we do that, now you can see um, how it looks. Again, that's a pretty simple way to get data in. There are a fair number of options. Um, Read.table is a more general one, so you can use that for other kinds of files. Um, you'll see over here there are choices if you are importing an Excel file or SPSS. Um, if you're importing something from Google Drive, there's a different uh, package you need called Google Drive, and you can import from there. And you can see there's just a variety of ways. Of course, getting data into R is a very important thing. So now you're going to want to save this on your local file. Notice it opens it up right in your um, thing. I'm going to call it importing.r. .r is for a script window. If you made a R markdown file, you'd call it .rmd. OK, so um, the rest of this uh, um, activity, um, again, if we were in a regular class, I would walk you through during a class time, or actually my learning fellows would do that. Um, and you're going to want to import uh, from both of these um, to do that. And you're going to want to give uh, the command, in order to get the points, you're just going to give the command that downloads this white wine file. This one is already in the right term, so you can actually just enter it directly. Um, Lastly, I want to mention while we're here, uh, here are the data sets that we're going to use for the project. Um, depending on the semester, you might have different ones. And you want to think about how to download that file. Now that file is a lot bigger than these ones that we're using here for practice, so it actually might take you a couple minutes to download it. The other thing is once you've imported that, it's gigantic. So um, you might want to save it somewhere first. Um, some people actually like to download it first to their uh, Google Drive or somewhere. Um, and then we're going to talk about how to clean or uh, limit data sets so we could filter it by month or gender or whatever it is we want to filter by so we can get a smaller data set so that it actually will run on our computers. Um, of course, in a true big data sense, you would want to you know, use as big of data as you can, but um, you also don't want to crash your computer. Um, the view.truman machine works fairly well. Um, that's the virtual client here on campus. Um, so if you do it that way, that works fine, although it does crash occasionally, so you do want to make sure you save frequently. Um, I always joke like an 80s video game, not like a new one that saves automatically for you. So um, that was just a quick introduction to how to download uh, data. Again, that sheet you might want to have. Um, the cheat sheets that I mentioned before, um, you might want to have your cheat sheet ready, which does have uh, how to import data on it. And again, the one that says read R is the one that will work. Um, for what you're doing. So, all right, enjoy.